first of all, if we go back to the start of, of 2021, um, obviously you hadn't played for, for over a year on tour. Um, did you have any goals for, for sort of that 12 month period or were you just looking to get back on tour again and, and to start playing? Yeah, I think pretty much just getting back on tour. I mean, I graduated with the idea of, you know, I graduated in 2020 thinking, OK, now I'm professional and, you know, going to start playing. And then there was no tournaments for a full year. So it was kind of just trying to get in anything, really. I mean, my ranking was, you know, I didn't have a ranking basically coming out of, of um college so it was a case of just literally getting into any tournament I could um which took a while it was a a bit of a struggle at the start you know trying to get into even like a 3k 5k in in the UK um when they did restart so I mean I obviously have have longer goals and it's like it was kind of frustrating at at the start because I, I couldn't even get into a 3k or something so um so it was kind of having to just be patient and like wait for wait for it to happen. But um, but yeah, I'd say on like the main goal of 2021 was just get as high as I possibly can with the time and the tournaments that I could play in. So yeah. And obviously your first uh, tournament back came in Washington. At, at what was a, a really good event at Squash on Fire? Um, what was that experience like to to finally get back out there and and to to be around some some top quality players who were in that draw as well? Yeah, I mean, it was a bit of a surprise, to be honest, because that was, like you say, that was my first tournament and it was a 20k, which was kind of, after after being in the UK, not being able to get into the smaller ones, um, I actually just came out here because my partner lives out here and I hadn't been, we hadn't seen each other for, you know, seven months or something because of the pandemic. So I um, was on the reserve list for the tournament, got into the US on like the waiver um, exemption and then yeah people just started dropping 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 and then I was like first reserve with like a day to go and I was thinking oh my gosh I'm gonna actually get in this and um and then yeah I mean I knew you know I knew I was playing playing it well and like had been training hard over the last year so I had nothing to lose really and um yeah I got a good first round win against Nicole Bunyan um and then went on to play uh, Low We Win and lost out in three uh, three one, but was you know just happy to be back on court competing and it was just re- like so exciting. I mean, I'm actually I'm in DC. That's where I'm like based when I'm in the US. So it was kind of a home crowd, uh, home away from home. So it was uh, a great first first event, um, and obviously got some good points and it helped with helped with the ranking. So. And something else that would have helped with the rankings was the tournament <laughs> after that. Um, obviously, you mentioned, you know, it was a late call-up for, for Squash on Fire. It was also quite a late call-up to, to feature in, in the World Championships. Um, it was your debut in that tournament. And not just that, but you got to face off with world number two, Noran Gohar, on the glass court. What was that experience like as your first taste of, of World Championship action? Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, invaluable experience playing um, Gohar on the glass. And again, the last minute call up, you know, it was it is kind of nice just going in, no pressure. And uh, I mean, there wouldn't be any pressure no matter how long I knew about it playing playing the run. But um, but yeah, I literally found out the day before, flew to Chicago um, straight on that glass court, which I mean, the you know, the venue in the Cathedral Hall was um, was something else. And just just to be on there made me more excited and, you know, hungry for more and looking to just be on that stage even more in, in the next few years. So, um, yeah, it was great. And like you say, <laughs> I mean, I don't think that'll ever happen again. Someone who's ranked 365 or something in the world gets into the, the world champs. But, um, yeah, I had to count my lucky stars then. It was... Uh, Pretty, pretty lucky. You played well as well. And obviously following that, you came back to England and won your maiden title in uh, in Cheatham Hill. Um, and you were unseeded for that, obviously, like you say, because of your ranking being so low, having not played for a while. So you beat four of the, the top eight seeds. Firstly, how did it feel to, to take your first win on tour? And secondly, that must have given you a lot of confidence to say, yeah, I can beat these players that are sort of around the top 100 and, and even slightly higher. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it's always, you know, it was definitely special. I've kind of, you know, always dreamt about being a professional squash player since being 
I don't know, seven, eight years old, I've always said I wanted to be a professional squash player. So to actually just get that first title um, was was definitely special. My parents were there and, um, you know, they've supported me for forever. So, um, so yeah, that was that was great. And definitely just, again, made me want to push on and, and you know, go on to the bigger, bigger tournaments and um, get some bigger titles, so. And you mentioned uh, some bigger titles. You then went on, you came back to the States and, and won at the Nash Cup, um, you know, a, a challenger event that's been played for many, many years. Um, how did it feel to win such a storied event and get your name and, and of course, the little English flag on the on the bottom of the, the Nash Cup trophy? Yeah, def- definitely. Uh, um, probably the highlight of 2021. Um, you know, being, again, not not really seeded, probably had had the toughest draw. I was up against Hannah Motaz, who was the one seed um, first round. So I kind of knew going into it, that was probably you know if I got through that one I definitely had a good chance um and you know I thought I was playing really well and yeah I mean I've heard so many stories and you know talking to players on tour like the Nash Cup was a great tournament that everyone loves and it's um the organizers are great and you know you get put up with Billet who are, who were amazing and um so yeah it was just it just felt good the whole week you know like some, some tournaments you go to in a you're not quite as settled, but that this one just felt really, um, really good. And yeah, to come away with the title was was uh, was special. I was very happy with that. And you mentioned earlier, obviously, you you were down at uh, world number three hundred and sixty-seven um, in May, um, and you started January as world number sixty-five, your highest ever place in the world rankings. How proud are you of how you've been able to move up the rankings so quickly and, and so easily, it seems, over, over the last eight months. Yeah, it's been, I mean, it's been kind of tough because I've been playing a lot of events, just trying to get in any anything and everything that I can. Um, and in some ways, I'm, I'm still a little impatient and I'm like, I want to be high. I want to be, you know, I want to be breaking into that top 50 and getting into the platinum events and, um, you know, I've had a couple of wins against top 50 players in some of the bigger tournaments and it, that makes me just want more of that, you know, and to be playing <clears throat> against those those girls more often. But um, but yeah, when I sit back and, you know, actually like think from 367 at the start of the year or whatever to, um, to 65 now, like I have to be happy with that and just kind of put it in perspective. And, you know, it's only really... Like I played my first event in June, so it's been what seven months or something. Um, so yeah, I think just just really eager and keen to be pushing on and um really looking forward to to tournaments starting again this year. Is top fifty and, and obviously featuring in, in more platinum events sort of the next big goal for, for the start of 2022 pushing forward? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the stage I want to be playing on and the um you know the the players I want to be playing against and getting results against, and it's just that next jump really. Um, definitely hoping to be you know around top fifty by the end of end of this season. Sort of like you know depending on how tournaments go. I mean it's all kind of touch and go at the minute with with COVID and what actually goes ahead. But um, but yeah, that's definitely the next the next goal. Um, short term in the short term, yeah. And finally, on a, on a national view, one that maybe slightly, maybe might be on your radar, maybe not, is the Commonwealth Games. Um, you know, is that something you're you're possibly looking towards as you push on up the rankings as well? Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, watched the Commonwealth Games and thought about that since being young as well. But um, I think maybe next for tw- like, well, sorry, this year now, um, it it probably is a bit too soon um you know we've got we've got a really strong bunch of bunch of women in the England squad right now and um you know I haven't really been involved that much with England squash um <clears throat> over the last sort of year so I'm hoping definitely you know representing England was a highlight of my junior career <coughs> excuse me and um I absolutely want to do that at senior level so it's definitely on my radar for the future and um hopefully you know, the next next cycle that comes around, I can can get involved with that, and um, yeah, for sure.